Well, good morning, everybody. It's good to be in church. It's good to be back. Amen. Say, praise the Lord, I'm back. Hallelujah. Just quickly before I go into the Word of God, um, Pastor Sharon, would you just bring that prize that we have? It was a promise we made. We had, during the lockdown, we had a competition. I think some of you or many of you will remember it. It was on the group. And we posed some questions and everybody had fun. And um, Sister Renu was our winner. So Sister Renu, <laughs> hallelujah. Congratulations. Well done. Well done. Congratulations. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. So it'll encourage you next time there's a competition you push. Amen? Amen. All right. St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 25. Matthew 25. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We apologize for the delay this morning. And I believe it's, this is going to be something new for the church. We're not accustomed to having church this way. But praise God, we will outgrow this thing. Amen. I said praise God, we will outgrow this thing. Amen. Amen. So, um, yeah, there have been many changes that we've had to do to church. I've just been sharing with some of the people this morning in terms of praise and worship. If there are people in the building, we can only have one singer on the stage so we will have an opportunity where there's nobody here and we'll have the full group on stage where they can where they can really bless us amen we'll video that and we will present that to the church and we'll make it a part of our services going forward amen praise god now this morning i want to i was going to talk to you about the will of God and the will of men. But I would like to talk to uh, talk about something that is very dear to my heart, which God ministered to me early hours of this morning. And I, and I love it when God does that, that he just changes all of a sudden. And in Matthew 25, it's a parable that Jesus speaks concerning the wise and the foolish virgins. And if I would title the message this morning, I would title it Lockdown, What Now? Lockdown, What Now? When you ask yourself that question, say, What Now? Hallelujah. Now, from verse number one. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. There were how many? <clears throat> ten. They went out, they took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. The Bible says that there were ten who took their lamps. There were ten. And then the Bible says they all slumbered and slept. They all slept while the bridegroom was delayed. And at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, 
for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. I want you to highlight that. Those who were ready went in with him to the wedding and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore. For you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. You know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Now there are many things that have been going rife during the lockdown. Many messages. Some people were saying, no, Jesus is not coming. And there, there were so many things and of everything to do that is happening in the world at present. And the thing is, who do you listen to? My advice to everybody is to listen to what the Word of God says. The Word of God says that there were ten virgins. The Word of God says there were five who were wise. The Word of God says there were five who were foolish. In this time of lockdown, I believe everybody has been given the opportunity. It's an opportunity given unto God to humanity. To close the door to everything that is hindering you from your walk with God. To close that door behind you and to seek the face of God. That you can have a face-to-face -face communion with God. That you can connect with God. And I believe that there are many that have been empowered during this time. Many that have received impartation by the Holy Ghost. There are people that were sleeping all the time. That have awoken now. They've awoken from their slumber. And they're at a place now where God has their attention. There are people that didn't know that they had gifts and talents and skills which God needs to use in this hour that God has revealed to them. And the thing is, when you come out of lockdown, what do you do? Are you going to go back to sleep? Or are you going to rise up and say, I have come out strong. You are stronger than this thing. I say you are stronger than this thing. You are stronger than Corona. Corona, I think they get that word. It, 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 it comes from, it, it means like a crown, a coronation. But let me tell you, there is only one crown that is higher than every crown in this entire universe. And that's the crown that's on the head of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of Lords and He is the King of Kings and He's the head of the church. You and I are the church. We are His body. We receive our power. We receive our strength from the head and that is Jesus. I believe that the church is strong in this hour. I believe the church is coming out stronger in this hour. I believe that there's an infilling of the Holy Ghost that is in the heart of every believer, every child of God, but you have got to tend your fire. The job of a pastor, the job of a teacher, a prophet, an evangelist is to get you connected to the power 
get you connected to the fire. It is not the pastor's job to keep your fire burning. It is your responsibility. It is your duty to keep your fire. Tend your fire. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. The Bible says there were ten who went. But there were five who were foolish. And there were five who were wise. That this is a typology of the church. We have some foolish Christians. And we have some wise Christians. If you're foolish, you allow your fire to die out. If you're foolish, you let your oil run dry. And how do you do that? By the way you live. In the book of Ephesians chapter number 4. Hallelujah. Labro Shakaramandeyasa. Ephesians chapter 4. From verse 25. It speaks about not grieving the Holy Spirit. When you grieve the Holy Spirit. You find that the oil starts running out of your life. And that is a foolish thing to do. The wisest thing to ever do is to heed the voice of the Spirit of God. Ephesians 4 verse 25 says, Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. There are people who get angry and in that moment of anger, they allow that anger to take root to such an extent it becomes sin in their lives and it draws them out of the presence of God. He says, do not let the sun go down on your anger. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. Hallelujah. It's, you know, I want to speak to married couples. Before you go sleep, resolve your issue. Don't go to bed angry. Because tomorrow is a promise and not a guarantee that you'll see it. Make peace before you go to bed. Be at peace with each other. Because the next day you'll awaken and your partner's no more there. I'm speaking to children and their parents. Children, do not be angry with your parents. Don't, there are many, 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 many people that have an argument and the ones I'm speaking to are the grown-ups, the youth, and those that are grown up, that have now become adults. They have an argument with their parents and then they think, okay, I don't need you. I live on my own. Not realizing that tomorrow you will not see your mother or you will not see your father. And then when God takes your parent, there's no opportunity for you to make up. There's no opportunity for you to say, I'm sorry. And then you go living through your life and that oil has started dripping and you lose your joy. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the word of God tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. So live joyfully. Hallelujah. He says, do not let the sun go down on your anger. Nor give place to the devil. Don't give place to the devil. You cannot hold hands with the devil and walk with God at the same time. You've got to choose who you're serving. You understand? you got to choose who you're serving. Listen. There is no compromising when it comes to the word of God. Don't come and tell me that times have changed. Yes, times may have changed, but God hasn't changed. The word of God hasn't changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Heaven and earth may pass away, but not one tittle from the word of God will fail or fall. Can you say amen, somebody? We serve an unchanging God. Hallelujah. 
Don't give room to the devil. Let him who steal no let him who stole steal no longer. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good that he may have something to give him who has need. You see, we need, we've been filled with the oil and we have the lamp. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Let your light so shine that men may see your deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. In the book of Philippians, he says, you must shine as light in the midst of this crooked and perverse generation. We are the light, brothers and sisters. The prisoners need to hear the gospel. Come on, somebody. How are we going to eradicate crime in our country? How are we going to eradicate crime? How are we going to bring down the statistics? The government cannot do it. The government cannot do it. Let me tell you who can do it. The church of Christ can do it. Jesus is the answer. I'm yet to meet a man or a woman who has an encounter with God that will remain the same. No, you cannot be the same. He changes you from the inside out. Those who stole will steal no longer. They'll go labor with their hands and you'll find that the ones that they were stealing from, they'll go make restitution to. They'll start helping those that are in need. I mean, can you, can you picture this? A man that was an armed robber today, he goes to prison. And he hears the gospel in prison. And he receives Christ. He's changed. He's a new creation. He comes out of prison. And all of a sudden, he learns to work with his hands because Christ reveals to him his giftings and skills and talents and abilities. There is no such a thing as an individual who is born talentless. There is no such a thing as a talentless individual. When God breathed the breath of life into man, he breathed his purpose and his destiny. His talents and skills, everything is in that breath. And that is God's breath. And every man is born into sin, so you are cut off from the giver of that breath. But the day you receive Jesus, you are connected to the breath giver. The first Adam became a living being. The second Adam is the Lord from heaven. He became a life-giving spirit. Now he gives you life. He sees life in a new way. He comes out of prison now. He starts working with his hands now. You find that... He'll, come on, can, can you see this thing? That same guy who stole, going to the house where he stole and said, Listen, I'm so sorry. I stole this from you and I've come to make peace with it. Or even if he doesn't do that, but working with his hands, he's able to see people that are needy. And he starts helping the needy. You see, what this lockdown has taught us is that we need to start preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Everybody needs to receive Jesus. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the hope. He's our hope of glory. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. He says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. But what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. You see, you get folk. You see, that's now the foolish Christian, the foolish virgin. Is the one who says, ah, oh, I was born this way, I speak my mind. That is somebody who is unregenerated. 
They haven't been regenerated by the power of the Holy Ghost. They have not the Spirit of Christ in them. Because when you receive the Spirit of Christ, you begin to think like Christ. You begin to behave like Christ. You begin to speak like Christ. The Bible says we have the mind of Christ. You put on the mind of Christ. So you no longer speak your mind, you speak Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And do, watch here, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. I remember prior to this lockdown, the Lord gave my son Kurt that word about the Holy Spirit being grieved. Do you remember? And I remember calling out Kurt to the front and he shared with the church. And in that very week, we went on lockdown. The Holy Spirit is grieved. And I believe that God in this hour is awakening us. He says, let all bitterness, let all bitterness, do not be a bitter Christian, be a better one. Do not be a bitter person. Be a better person. He says, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Put those things away. That is not you. Put the old away and clothe yourself with the new. And be kind to one another. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Do not walk around with unforgiveness. All these things that I have mentioned is foolishness. To hold on to those things, it is foolish. It is really foolish because then your oil starts dripping. And let me tell you, once your oil is gone, when there's no oil, the lamp can never burn. When there's no oil, the lamp can never burn. So you choose. You're either hot or you're cold. There's no in between. You're either hot or you're cold. If you're hot, what now? What now? That's my question. If you're hot, what now? You know what? Begin to live like you've never lived before. Begin to preach like you've never preached before. Come on, somebody. Begin to worship like you've never worshipped before. Begin to give like you've never given before. And that, you know, you get foolish Christians. You hear people... I gave so much to the church and I gave so much. You know what? You're still foolish. If you can talk about everything that you've ever given to the church, you're foolish and you're still a baby. You need to grow up. When you give into a ministry or you give to the house of God or you give to a church, you are not giving that man that's there as the pastor. You're not giving the church. You're giving unto the Lord. Oh my Jesus, help the church. You're giving unto the Lord. It's his kingdom. You so, that's why you can't function in the kingdom. Because you're focused on a church building. If you can begin to have a kingdom mentality, you'll experience everything that's within the kingdom. There are many that rob themselves of that glorious opportunity of partaking of that which rightfully belongs to the citizens of the kingdom. The kingdom of God. It's the rule of God. There's a king in this kingdom. And he has dominion and power over everything. And his name is King Jesus. So when I honor him with my possessions, I honor him with my life. It's to the king. 
and the king honors me in return. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you're hot, live like you've never lived before. It means begin to do things you've never done before. Things that people told you you'd never be able to do. My word to you is you can do all things to Christ who gives you strength. All things are possible to him who believes. It's either you're going to believe what the world told you. You're going to believe what the people told you. Or you're going to believe what God has told you. Who do you believe? That's my question. So you hot what now? Live. Say, I will live like I've never lived before. Amen. It is possible. All things are possible. Have that mentality. If God has given you a dream, begin to work on it. If God has given you a vision, begin to work on it. Hallelujah. If you're cold, you have only one thing to do. You have one thing to do. If you're cold, there's only one thing you can do. All those things that have made you cold, eradicate them from your life. Get them out of your life. So that God can do this new thing in you. You with me? Hallelujah. You know, I was speaking to the Lord this morning and the Lord showed me this. Prior to the lockdown, there were many who were cold. There were many who were cold. And during the lockdown, there are some that have turned around. But unfortunately, there are still some who are still cold. Do not be hard-hearted. Jesus is coming. He is coming. Not only that, today could be your last day and you're cold. Where are you? You see, when you're cold, you're going to be that coal that's going to burn in hell. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss the mark. Make every opportunity to press, to press into God. I know the world has taught us a lot of things. And we've been conditioned to the world. But this word will teach you so much that the world will never teach you. Most people believe that experience has taught me. Don't go by your experiences. Open this word and allow this word to teach you. Thy word, O Lord, is a lamp unto my foot and a light unto my path. You see all those things the world told you you couldn't do? You'll discover through this word that you can do it. Because the world loves its own. So what does the world do? It wants to keep its own in the world. But this word sets you free. This word sets you free. I see right now that there are those that God has groomed. And you will begin to fly as the eagles. The storms of life may come, the winds may blow, but as an eagle you will take off and you'll fly over the storms. You'll fly over the winds. That from wherever you're at, you'll be able to see adversity long before it comes. You'll be able to see adversity long before it ever comes. And you'll be ready for it. It will not take you by surprise. It will not take you by surprise. Hallelujah. So, are you wise or are you foolish? That's my question to you. And that is what I leave you with this morning. So are you wise or are you foolish? Sister Dolly shared Psalm 104 this morning. I want to read verse 4 for you. The New Living Translation says, The winds are your messengers. The King James refers to that. He makes, 
his angels that is angels speaks of his angels your ministering spirits flames of what you flames of fire are your servants flames of fire are your servants those who serve God are flames of fire what does fire do fire keeps warm fire gives light hallelujah that it doesn't matter what fire life may bring your way but you'll have a fire on the inside of you that's bigger than the fire without and the fire within you will quench the fire around you and you'll come through you'll come through unharmed you'll not even be smelling of smoke you won't even have the scars to show it. oh Jesus oh Jesus I'm reminded of Jesus many times Jesus faced the crowds and there were those who sought to stone him to death was Jesus concerned about the stones that they were ready to throw at him did he concern himself about that was Jesus concerned about how he's gonna get out of this or how he's going to fight this no Jesus walked in the power of the Holy Spirit that when listen they surrounded him crowds thousands surrounded him seeking to stone him and he just vanished <laughs> he just vanished that means when you have the fire of God in you things that were meant to harm you will not even be able to touch you the enemy will not even notice that you slipped through oh Jesus you'll not notice that you slipped through you'll not notice why because of the fire and because of the oil because of the oil you know what you know when something is too tight and you can't get it untightened what do you do you put oil you put oil and what does the oil do all of a sudden it loosens and if somebody's hands is full of oil and you try to catch them what happens they slip through and you find that you get doors you find you get doors brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus is the door to heaven and he's used you and I he has called us and he's using us to be a door to him who's the main door you are all a door to the main door the question is what type of door are you are you a door which squeaks all the time because that's some Christians for you the only thing they do every time they open this door the mouth door it squeak 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 you get squeaky Christians squeak 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 it sounds like a little chick in a foul run but God never intended you to be in the foul run God intended you to be an eagle so what are you doing in the foul run you see when it's squeak 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 what is that squeak 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 that comes out of your mouth you speak about everybody that has hurt you everybody that has done you harm a true child of God takes no thought of who done them in because they know that he who touches you touches the apple of his eye he who does you in does him in you remember Paul when he persecuted the church Jesus didn't ask Paul Paul why are you persecuting brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so he says why are you persecuting me 
a true believer understands that God speaks for them. They understand that God has their back. They don't go around complaining, moaning, and speaking everything negative. I don't even want to use the word negative. Let me get that out. Speaking every evil that is. Everything evil just comes out of the mouth. Gossip, slander. No. You need to put some oil. You need to put some oil. This mouth was not given to you for gossip. It was given to you for the gospel. Use it for the gospel. So put some oil. You'll find all of a sudden your life won't be squeaky. You'll overcome. Amen. You'll overcome. Because in the oil itself is the ability to do the impossible. Yesterday, I'm closing with this. Yesterday, whilst driving home, we were in the car. And there's something that Joshua mentioned. And he said about the supernatural. What was it? Hallelujah, I love that. Did you get that? In the natural. In the natural. We call it miracles. In the supernatural. In the supernatural. We call it the norm. <laughs> Woo! In the supernatural, it is normal. It's nothing strange. You got that? So how about this? I'm no longer waiting for a miracle. I'm from a supernatural class. So I'm going to live the supernatural. And that's going to be the norm for me. That's going to be normal. Hallelujah. Amen. Say no more squeaking for me. No more squeaking for me. I can see clearly. By the word of God by the Spirit of God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come and give the Lord praise. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, before we go, I want to call upon Pastor Sharon, who's going to share the offering with us. Amen. I shared with you the offering in the season that we are in, the offering we will do after service. And as we exit the church, you can place your envelope with your offering into the offering box, which is at the exit of the church. Amen. Praise God. Come and give the Lord praise. Brothers and sisters, it is so wonderful to be here this morning. And we thank God for the presence of the Holy Spirit. We feel His mighty power. Hallelujah. We serve such a wonderful God, such a mighty God. Even during this time of lockdown, where we were all apart from each other, God, He received every seed that you sowed, and He was the one that received every um blessing that you may have sown to somebody else maybe it was a packet of sugar maybe it was something you done for somebody a prayer you sold your tithes and offering it and you know who received it it was the Lord himself hallelujah so when I asked God to give me a message he said go to Psalms 118 and that's what I'm gonna read from today Psalms 118 the Lord never failed us we had a plate of food we want to thank you for good health we were walking in perfect health and you know what God also showed me this morning he showed me everyone that came through that door this morning 
he said that's look at that eyes the eyes of determination eyes of zeal that's the one this morning that i'm going to touch and i believe that god gave me that word that everyone that came through that door this morning is healed if you even had sickness it is gone in jesus name every comorbidity no matter what it can be sugar or hypertension this morning your levels will always be normal hallelujah that's the god we serve this morning he has touched you every sickness fell by that door this morning hallelujah god has seen the determination and the zeal the hearts of the people this morning hallelujah and that's a great god we serve he blesses us continuously like we said like pastor preached this morning we are walking in miracles we are miracle walkers this morning hallelujah wherever we go miracles follow us on each side of us there's a miracle we trample on demons as we walk past them you know even in this time and sister wherever you go you may go into town you may go into the supermarket you may go into a workplace i i'm in context at um, face to face contact with patients but you know when i go to work the lord told me that you trample on sickness sickness goes hallelujah i'm not afraid of no sickness and and i tell you something our children of god are not afraid of no sickness hallelujah no virus can attack us hallelujah we serve a mighty god you know what really really you know the spirit of god just bubbles in me and i just want to say something today when you see the elderly how they just want to come to church the zeal in that they don't afraid of sickness because they know to die is to gain hallelujah and we shall not die prematurely and that's what i see i see god's determination on them i see them moving in power in good health hallelujah rababa sete lebenda rababanda master kaya rababanda that's what god showed me that you know they just an example that we should follow just look at the zeal just look at the desire you know how are you going to encourage your child in a time like this if you yourself is faltering and failing where's the, where's the god in you where's the fire in you where's that god that says i can do all things through christ who strengthens me i can walk through demons i trample on serpents and scorpions on my way on my way wherever i go they just die they the viruses fall down you know what satan says You know what Lucifer the chief in charge says to the to his cohorts when he sees you he says to them watch out don't touch that one you will die if you touch that one because we serve a mighty god hallelujah we serve a powerful god this morning hallelujah and i tell you something i'm not afraid of no demon because all demons they respect the child of god hallelujah they know not to come near they know not to come near hallelujah so this morning i'd like to read to you Psalm 118 verse 1 says oh give thanks unto God, unto the Lord for he is good because his mercy endureth forever let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever he's a merciful god that mercy is our fuel it's our fire it never ceases hallelujah for the child of god let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever forever let that be your echo in your home my god's mercy it goes forever hallelujah hallelujah let them that now let them now that fear the lord say that his mercy endureth forever i called upon the lord in distress the lord answered me and set me in a large place hallelujah he gives you open spaces hallelujah where nobody can touch you the lord is on my side i will not fear what men can do unto me the lord take it my path with them that help me therefore shall i see my desire upon them that hate me it is dangerous it is dangerous to come against the child of god hallelujah we serve a mighty god it is better to trust in the lord than to put confidence in man it is better to trust the lord than to put confidence in princes all nations compass me about but in the name of the lord i will destroy them they compass me about yea they compass me about but the name of the lord but in the name of the lord i will destroy them they compass me about like bees they are quenched as the fire of thorns for the name of the lord for in the name of the lord i will destroy them thou hast thrust so at me that i might fall 
but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and song and is become my salvation. The Lord, the voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord dealt valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted and the right hand, hand of the Lord that do it valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. So we've got something to do. Hallelujah. There is, a, there is something that God has got for each one of you here today. Long life so that you can tell, you can sing and praise about the God you serve. Hallelujah. The Lord had chastened me so but he had not given me over unto death. Open unto me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them and I will praise the Lord. This gate of the Lord into which the righteous shall enter. I will praise thee for thou hast heard me and art become my salvation. The stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord had made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God has given us this day. You know, brothers and sisters, this is the day of the last hour. I don't care who may say what, but it's the time that, brothers and sisters, we need to draw closer to God. We need to serve Him red hot on fire. When it comes to times that you're being persecuted, don't look back. Forgive and move forward, brothers and sisters, because let me tell you, the devil wants to keep you busy with the things of this world. He wants to bring distraction into our minds. That's where the, it starts. But you let go. And you just move on, brothers. Don't let get distracted. Distracted because I'm telling you, we are in an hour where we need to run swiftly. We need to walk. When others are fearful, you are bold. You can you can know that the Lord is on your side 24-7. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God this morning. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord, O Lord, I beseech thee. Send now prosperity. Yes, that's what your prayer can be this morning. That the Lord bless you. As you, you give to the Lord, He blesses you mightily. Blessed be He that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. God is the Lord which hath showed us light. Bind the sacrifice with cards, even the horns of the altar. Thou art my God, and I will praise thee. Thou art my God, I will exalt thee. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah, what a mighty God we serve. We serve a powerful, mighty God. He is doing mighty miracles. He is your healer. And you know, he is the healer. Not me, not anybody, but I tell you something. Jesus is the healer. He is here this day. He can heal you from anything. He can set you free. He can make you he can revive you from the inside that you move in power and fire the Holy Spirit is such a gentle mighty spirit he wants to mate with you he wants to dine with you he wants to come and live with you allow him this morning you know something brothers and sisters what what a mighty God we are we, we can be women busy at home but you know whenever there was a woman Jesus met the woman at the well Jesus goes to women Jesus came to the house where the woman anointed him with oil he comes to you hallelujah and he comes to you and don't push him away because he's a mighty God he's such a loving father we as women we must embrace the Lord Jesus Christ we set our whole home on fire you find your children are serving God you find this power in your home you find it healing flows hallelujah you find there's no sickness can dwell in that home and even then when your child comes to you and he says he's worried about so and so you say you know what you can you can go through that my son because I'm telling you I will stand there and you will wake up because there's a power in God the God I serve is so powerful he'll raise you up from the dead hallelujah nothing will touch that child that child will just move in power because he got a parent that is so full of power in God hallelujah that you'll know you can raise that person up you can just come there and that person is gonna get up because you know the power of the God you serve hallelujah so you know this morning we're raising up a generation that is empowered with the Word of God 
Our children are not afraid in this time. They might say to you, Mom, Dad, what are, if, we, if you are going through such things in life, what are we going to go through? No. You say we go one day at a time with Jesus. He said, take no thought about tomorrow, for tomorrow cares for itself. He says he cares for the birds of the air. How much more will he care and provide for us? Hallelujah. We serve such a mighty God. And I truly want to thank him. I want to thank him because he's a wonderful God. And he carried us through and he will still carry us through. And you know, there's, there's people that are seeking him and, and have found him. Don't let go of him what you found, treasury brothers and sisters. Because he's a mighty God. And he just wants you to serve him. And he just wants you to be close to him. You cannot leave him not wherever you go. You've got to take him with you. Hallelujah. Because there may be dangers all over, but I tell you something, the child of God is so protected. The blood of Jesus never fails. Hallelujah. He's a mighty God. And I just want to honor him. Because he has never failed us and he will never. He will never fail you, brothers. Hallelujah. I see him. He is just so ready. He's so ready to come and fetch his children. But he says he's given us time and hold on to those that are earnestly waiting for him. He says there's going to be time where he's bringing more sheep. He's once more soul saved. So that's the time that we are in. We are in the time of the harvest. Where God is so merciful that he doesn't want to leave nobody. Hallelujah. He's given us all the grace. It's a grace period where he's coming back again, but he's preparing us. So I thank him this morning. He's a mighty God. And we can rest assured that we serve the King of Kings. We serve the Lord of Lords. We serve such a mighty God. We can be honored that we, you know, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. I just want to thank God that he is such a mighty God. And I really thank him and I really praise him. Because he is everything to me and you, brothers and sisters. Put him first always because he never fails. He is the same yesterday, today and forevermore. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And we thank him this morning. And even though I want to just say, brothers and sisters, this whole week, God has got you covered. Hallelujah. God has got us covered wherever we go. He's got us protected. There are angels. There are millions of angels. And he's dispatched some for you. Hallelujah. You just have to tap into to the word of God. And wherever you can go and you tie it and you say, angel, today you take over. And I'm telling you, you walk in the miraculous. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, and I just want you to bow your heads, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit. We thank you that as we empty ourselves, we don't, we don't, we cease to exist. We give you full power. When people see us, they no longer see us. We have died. And we live by the faith of the Son of God today who gave himself for us. So that's a powerful faith we're going by. If we're living by that faith, we're going by a powerful faith. It's a faith that makes you go wherever you cannot go. It's a faith that says no, no sickness can befall you. It says no virus can attack you. It says that you are covered. You are protected. You have a boldness that the world cannot understand. You are a new creation. Jesus says, behold, you are a new creation. So if you are a new creation, you're not the same. You're not the same human being like others. You are something different. You have the power of God in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Understand, brothers and sisters wherever you go today you are a new creation there's something new in you you are no longer Sharon you are no longer Dolly you are no longer brother Brian you're no longer Tanirina there is something in you hallelujah there's a power in you there's a faith in you and that faith is the faith of the son of God that you have now tell me if you have his faith oh hallelujah oh hallelujah there is something there's something that you can stand by and say nope 
I don't tolerate that. I can, you can raise the dead. You can heal the sick. Hallelujah. Praise God. Here's your praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father Lord. And we give you glory and we thank you, Father. Oh God, for every heart, oh God. I want to say thank you, Jesus, for every seed that was sown, oh God. Oh God, to the ministry. And Lord Jesus, oh Father, every gift, oh Father. Oh God, that the work of God can go on and on and on. Oh Father, we thank you, Lord. Bless your children. Bless each and every one of them, oh God. Like your word says, Father, you will open the windows that there will be no room to receive it. That they come into the overflow, Lord. Thank you as your word says, your word never fails, Jesus. What it says, it says, oh God. And what your word says is what we should do. We should do what your word says, Father. Hallelujah. Do what he says we must do. Not what your heart says or your mind says. But do what the word says. Because God is the word. He is this word. He, he may have left and he may have left us. But he left us with his spirit and his word. Hallelujah. And he is coming back again. Hallelujah. Thank you. We serve a mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Go and be blessed, brothers and sisters. Have a wonderful week this week. God be with you. Press on. Keep your lamp full, filled with oil. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.